I'm Shruti Valasa and in this video, we'll talk about some fundamental concepts of cascading in CSS. This is one of the most confusing concepts in CSS, but also really important. At some point when you're working on a huge web page styling it with CSS, you expect an element to have a specific style applied to it, but that's not working. And you don't understand why. It's usually because you have created two conflicting rules applying to the same element. Now to understand which rule applies during such conflicts, you need to know two basic concepts, cascade and specificity. Let's understand what cascade means through an example. I have some code here. It's a simple HTML document with a div and a paragraph element with class para and id p1. We also have some styles here, the p selector, with font size 16 pixels and font family sans serif and then a class selector with color green and here's what you see in the browser all these three styles are applied to this paragraph now assume you have a very long style sheet and you don't remember adding styles to this p element before so you end up adding another block with a p selector and font size 20 pixels. Sometime later, you come back and you look at this code and wonder why is the font size 16 pixels not working here? There are two conflicting rules, this and this. Why was 20 pixels applied and not 16 pixels? Let's understand how the browser thinks here. The browser first sees this P selector and applies font size 16 pixels and these two styles as well. And then later it comes, comes across a conflicting rule. In such cases, it checks the selector. Now we have an identical selector for both these conflicting rules. When you have an identical selector, the rule that comes last always wins. Try adding another P selector here with font size 32 pixels, save the file and you see this one wins. That's exactly what cascade means. Let's next look at what specificity means. I will remove this and here to this element selector, let me add color orange. Does that work? No. It conflicts with this rule, but though orange appears later in the code than green, this wins. Why is that so? Now, because the conflicting rules have different selectors. This is an element selector and this is a class selector. And according to the browser, a class selector is more specific than element selector, which is what makes this win. Let's add another level of complexity now. Add an ID selector, hash p1, with a color blue. Now, why did this win? That's because the browser again considers an ID selector to be even more specific than a class selector or an element selector. Each of these selectors or combination of selectors have a specificity value associated. Higher the value, more specific the selector. So if you understand how to calculate this value, you will know which one wins. Let's see how this value is calculated. Let's list down all the selectors and combination selectors, P, the uh, element selector, the class selector, ID selector, and let's assume in case we have something like a combination of two element selectors. Here, the least specific is an element selector. Then comes a class selector, and more specific is the ID selector. Let's add some boxes like this. Now calculate and add one to the selectors that are present here. We have one element selector for this, that is P. So we, we add one here. We don't have a class selector here, neither an ID selector. So the specificity value becomes 0, 0, 1. We'll do the same thing for the class selector. We have one class selector, zero element selector and zero ID selector. So the specificity value becomes 010. 0, 0. 
Same thing here, we have one ID selector, zero class selector, and zero element selector. Specificity value is one, zero, zero. And for this, we have two element selectors, one plus one, zero class selectors, and zero ID selectors. Now you can read all these values just like numbers. That is one, 10, 100, and two. And since 100 is the highest, we see the ID selector winning here. So the styles mentioned here overrides the class selector and the element selector and also combination of two element selectors if we have any like this. See, even this doesn't win because we just saw that the hash p1 id selector has a specificity value of 100. So this was about the two main concepts of cascade. Let's revise. We just learned that when we have two conflicting rules belonging to an identical selector, the one that comes later always wins. And then when we have conflicting rules belonging to different selectors, the specificity value is calculated and the highest one wins. Thank you for watching. Hit a like and share this video ahead. If you enjoyed watching this, don't forget to subscribe below and turn on the notifications so you won't miss a single video from Tyrus.